Pastor's going to download that Moses file. Or maybe you've done that for them. Right? We have to okay. order that. People from oh. Northwestern. I gave them the number. There's a number and a letter on the order form. And we can download that. There's no charge for that. No, there is a charge for that. I want to know when you get that bill. And then the book, Moses' book, should be coming to the address here. That's that little. They said they mailed it Monday. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was. I wanted it. I was gonna. I wanted to have mail it to me. That way, I know I would get my hands on it because I knew things here weren't always so sure. Or something. Anyhow, thanks. Oh my. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you in our, as, uh, as we continue our journey to the cross. We've been journeying to the cross with, uh, with various sounds. So the first sound was that of tearing. Today the sound is that of jingling. So you have to think to yourself, where would that be coming from? Well, you can see that it's talking is looking at some various coins and of course we're going to be looking at Judas sounds are sometimes very helpful as as it reminds us of things various sounds in your life are might might be reminding you of of certain things so if we turn to the next slide we see that there are some introductory thoughts for us as as we make our journey to the cross in sound the first introductory thoughts have you ever had a plan that publicly black, uh, backfired in an, in an embarrassing way? So you thought that this was going to work, it didn't work, and it was very public. As we talk about Judas today, we'll see that he had a plan that backfired in a public way to his own disgrace. Here's the second introductory thought. 
Have you ever thought that you had something valuable and it turned out to not be valuable at all? Maybe all of us can relate to that. There are things that we thought were just wonderful and amazing and then we get them and realize, oh, I don't think it was all that great. I, I can think of a few carnival things that I might have won and uh, thought that they were wonderful and when I got them home found out that they really weren't that special at all. How about the last one? As a personal reflection, have you ever needed a plan to fix a problem and found out that you couldn't fix it? Maybe this also, of course, uh, will relate us to Judas. But, uh, but Judas had a plan that he thought that it was going to turn out wonderful. But what he wanted to fix at the end, he wasn't able to fix at all. Those are some introductory thoughts to get our minds moving in the right direction as we, as we worship this morning. Let's begin with our first hymn. Rise my soul to watch and pray. We turn now to Psalm 27. Notice it is a responsive song. Join Psalm. Join with me in this psalm. The Lord is my light and my strength, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let's pause for a moment of silence in reflection of our own journeys to the cross. Jesus had never sinned. 
But God treated him as a sinner so that Christ could make us acceptable to God. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Therefore, with the authority of Christ, who took your sins, I can assure you that your sins have been removed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing this song, O Lamb of God. Today's Lenten reading in the form of a skit is entitled, Test Me. There are three voices, the voice of Jesus, the voice of Peter, and the voice of the narrator. Let's follow along with this reading. This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Even I have to die with you, I will never disown you. All the other disciples said the same. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. Jesus began to be sorrowful and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little far farther, he fell with his face to the ground, and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he returned to his disciples and found us sleeping. Couldn't you eat men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time, and he prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found us sleeping, because our eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more, and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The, the Son of Man is delivered, delivered into the hands of sinners. sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Let's continue with our next hymn verses of the song, Were You There?
were you there? Well, in many respects, of course, we can say we were not there, of course. We were not there physically. But we have been there through our mind and through our faith. We have been to these particular scenes. And that's what we're doing as we're journeying to the cross. We're going there. We're stopping to see some of the, the various scenes of, of the passion of the Lord. Today, all of the scenes involve Judas. So we're seeing the scene here for number one, it's in your bulletin, that has Judas and the priests. The next scene is going to be Judas in the garden. The third scene, Judas looking at the coins in his hand. Scene four, Judas wanting to return the coins to the priest. And then Judas's reaction to the failure of his plan. So our first our first thought as we start this particular lesson is going to be the thought of why this coin is so valuable. You have to look at that coin and realize now what's so valuable about this coin? Happens to be a coin that is worth the most anyone has ever spent on a single coin. You'll notice the date down here on the bottom the date down here on the bottom says 1794. This is considered one of the very first coins minted in, in the United States. The, the, minting, the minting of the United States actually started in 1792. This was one of its first coins. It, uh, it is entitled the Flowing Hair Silver Dollar, which was copper, and worth a, and worth a dollar. Today, if you have one of these stuck in your, uh, in your uh, coin purse, it's worth $10 million. I don't have one. I wish I did. Today, as we think about coins, we're, uh, we're thinking about Judas's coin. And, and as he looked at those coins, they were so valuable at one point in time. Until just a few moments later, all of a sudden, he thought they were worthless. Let's go back to these various scenes. Let, let's look at, at what was happening in these scenes, and, and let's talk about them. So the lesson that we're looking at, one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and he asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Let's follow the coins. Let's take this journey together. Let's go to the very first scene. So now here we are at the first scene. We're following the demise of Judas. And here's where it starts, isn't it? Let's look on as we look into the room that Judas is there with, with these priests. And he's asking them, hey, I've got something for you. You know, the background of this is they wanted Jesus to die, but they couldn't think of a, where, a, a place and, and, a, and a, a reason to pick him up and arrest him. They thought if they did that during this Passover celebration, well, they thought what was going to happen was that the crowd would riot. But if they could do this all in the middle of the night, if one of his very own disciples, well, that's what he's coming to them with. Judas, he's saying, can you hear it? We'll give you 30 pieces of silver. If you carry out this task, here is the negotiation that's taking place. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why is Judas doing this? And, and of course we know the answer to how much he's going to get, but not really why. Why is he there? Why is he doing this? And to be honest, it really doesn't matter why. He did it. 
But maybe if we think for a moment why, maybe he's disillusioned. And he thinks that Jesus' ministry is not going the way that he thought or wanted. Maybe he was trying to force the hand of Jesus to do what he knows that Jesus could do, but maybe Jesus was just too shy to carry it out. Jesus had the power. Maybe Judas was knowing that in his heart. So if he just got forced into it, I'll betray him, I'll force him to get his way out and to start this worldly reign that maybe Judas thought he could carry out. So he's going to use this money in a wise way. He's going to get Judas, Jesus to do what Jesus needed to do, and he'll get 30 pieces of silver in the whole effort. Here's Judas negotiating what's going to take place. Now, how much was actually prophesied in the Old Testament, wasn't it? The Old Testament book of Zechariah, it was foretold that these 30 pieces of silver, oh, we're looking on this first scene, and, and here we see it. Out come the coins jingling on the table. Go to the next scene. Follow along with me. You know this next scene. The next scene takes us out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now let's sit back here and just look to see what happens. Here comes Judas. He's coming up with, boy, why would he be coming up with these soldiers? Why would he be coming up with these chief priests, uh, the chief priest, or, or at least some of the other leaders of the church. Why would Judas be with them? What is going to happen? And now we see Judas come up to Jesus and kiss him? Judas is feeling pretty good right now. He's got those coins jingling in his pocket. And you know what those coins are saying. They're saying, I'm rich. I've got these coins. I've got a plan. I've got a plan that seems to be working. Jesus is going to be taken in by these leaders, and, and my plan is coming together. This is wonderful. What a value Jesus is. He's feeling like a, like a spy, an undercover spy, and making his plan all come to effort. The money feels good. The plan feels good. The coins are jingling. Oh, this is great. So what happens next? What happens over the course of the next hours? Jesus is betrayed, of course, with a kiss. And even Jesus thought that was just a little bit ironic. Judas is going to betray the Lord with a sign of affection. Isn't that strange? Judas, you want to show your affection to me by betraying me? Yes. We ask the question, would I ever do this? Would I ever betray Jesus? You know, if I'm looking at the Lenten story. As we look at the Lenten story, there's other people that I might think that I can relate to. The disciples who ran away, or the disciple who even seemed to be ashamed of, ashamed of Jesus. The one who said, I don't even know Jesus. Maybe I can relate to those disciples, but would I ever want to relate to Judas? My goodness. That picture over on the right has, has all the coins in the shape of a cross coming down on a hand. But the hand has been separated from Judas's body because the author was trying to help you to see that that's your hand. That's your hand that's taking these coins of silver. It's your hand that betrayed. Didn't we confess our own sins? 
And with that confession, we were saying to ourselves, it was my sins that took Jesus to the cross. It was my sins that, that betrayed Jesus. Yes, I can relate to Judas. And maybe I'm even worse. Because at least Judas was smart enough to get 30 pieces of silver. Because in many cases, I betrayed Jesus for free. I betrayed Jesus. And here's how we feel. And now because of those betrayals that we carry out, we see a picture of a person carrying on a ball and chain of guilt. And he's trying in this picture to get rid of the guilt. Because now Judas's plan isn't quite as cool as he thought it was. Because the plan is now becoming very painfully obvious that the plan failed. What is happening here? How come Jesus isn't releasing himself? How come Jesus isn't setting himself free? How come Jesus isn't performing a miracle? How come they're sentencing Jesus, the most innocent man that Judas ever knew? And finding him guilty to be killed? And now what's Judas going to do? Think he's going to go back to his disciples, his other friends? They watched him come up and deliver Jesus over. Now what is very clearly becoming his death. And Judas is responsible and his friends are going to welcome him back? What's he going to do? What's he going to do with his guilt? Where is he going to go? Who's going to help him? Look down at what's in Judas's hands. He's looking at those coins. And, and what are the coins saying to him. Those coins are pointing their fingers right back at him. The coins are mocking him. The coins are laughing at him. The coins are, the coins are saying, Judas, you're a murderer. You're a liar. You're a thief. Judas can't stand those coins in his hand. Now, what is he going to do? So let's go to the next scene. Judas can't stand the sound of those coins. He's got to find a way to do something. So now we go with Judas to this next scene where he goes back to those same chief priest, the, the same leaders of the church, and he wants to take the coins back. Like this is Walmart and the return policy that they might have. Well, if you're at Walmart, they, they say, sir, what is it that is the reason that you want to return this item? Well, they didn't work. They didn't do what I wanted them to do. I want you to take these back. But these men aren't Walmart. And they tell him, we don't want those coins. You made a bargain. You got paid. You feel guilty about it. That's none of our problem and none of our business. Now run along. And he throws the coins back at them. Why? Why? Because he's looking at those coins, the money in his hands, and look, it's all dirty. The coins are dirty. 
And Judas doesn't want anything to do with them. And the ironic part is, neither do the priests. The priests could pick up the money and look at the money in their hand and they'll see the same thing. That, that this money is tainted. This money is dirty money. Even the priests don't want to keep it. They say to themselves, it's blood money. This money is, has come to us and it's tainted by sin. We can't take this money and use it to the glory of God. So the money is unclean. Well, maybe we can do this. We can take the money and use it to buy a field to bury unclean people. So that's what they choose to do, which was also prophesied by Zechariah. So how does Judas feel as we're here looking on to these scenes as we're here listening to the sound of the jingling of the happy coins and then the jingling of the angry coins and the dirty coins. How does Judas feel? I really like the artist's portrayal with the hand of Judas over his heart. His heart must have hurt because he's wondering to himself, how do I make up for this? He knows that the wages of sin is death. Amen. So how can he make up for this which has happened? The only help that he has, that he's ever known up to this point, has been Jesus. And he just betrayed him. Is Jesus going to forgive him? Judas can't picture that. And if the wages of sin is death, then the only way he thinks that he can repay his sin is with his own death. With his hand over his heart. He takes his own life, thinking that that's going to pay the debt. But Judas's debt, or I should say Judas's debt, is way more than just the cost of his life. Amen. And your debt is way more than the cost of your life. So the wages of sin is death. <laughs> But not yours. The wages of sin is the death of Christ. Could Judas have found relief? The answer is yes. But he didn't believe that Jesus would ever forgive a poor sinner, a betrayer like him. And yet Jesus forgives the poor betrayer like us. When you hear the jingling of the coins, let them remind you that this debt is paid. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we gather our offerings to the Lord, uh, the offering plates are here in the front of the church, does, does this worship service give you an opportunity to understand what motivates you to give in thankfulness to the Lord? How we were and are betrayers of our Lord, and yet the Lord has gone to the cross to pay our debts. We certainly do have reason for thanksgiving and for praise. 
Let's continue now. Let's continue with Luther's morning prayer. And we join together in this prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Let's close with the song, May the Peace of God. Once again, thank you to everyone for, uh, for joining us here in our worship today. We pray that our worship service gives us, uh, gives us opportunity and inspiration for understanding the, the depths of love that our Savior went in order for our salvation. We continue to journey to the cross, tearing and jingling and next week crying. We'll listen to listen to uh, crying as it brings us to the cross. God's blessings to you as you continue your journey together with us. Have a great the rest of the week.